Hi, everybody, and welcome to Scratch. In this video, I'm going to show you how to navigate the Scratch platform, what the important buttons are, and basically how to get started. So the first question I always get from everybody is, what's up with the cat right over here on the screen? So in Scratch, we have sprites. Sprites are what's going to go into your project. It's going to be characters, items. That's what a sprite is. So the first thing I'd like you to notice is up over here in the top right corner, I can always make this window smaller or bigger. This is my terminal window. This is where the program's going to run. It's where I'm going to see what my code is making. So for right now, I just want to make it a little smaller so I can show you our cat. So you can see our cat is a sprite. But what if I want to add more sprites to my project? Well. Over here, you notice there's a blue button. When I hover over it, it turns green. It says, choose a sprite. And when I click on it, here's where all the sprites live. All the different items, animals, characters, just things. It's all right over here. So this is really a good place to start when you're playing around with Scratch. So let me choose an elephant because isn't it every day you just see an elephant and a cat hanging out together? So now I have two sprites, a cat and an elephant. And they don't do anything because there's nothing in the middle of the screen here. And this is my canvas. This is where I'm going to drag all of these coding blocks to to make different things happen in the program. So let me make our terminal window just a little bit bigger over here. And when I do that, you'll notice there's a green flag and then a red stop sign. Now the green flag makes your program run and the red stop sign makes it stop. And that's important because I'm gonna click on my cat and I'm gonna write some code for my cat. So I come over here and these are the different coding blocks and they're broken down by color. The blue blocks will make you move. These purple blocks, make you speak, they're your look blocks. We have sound blocks that are kind of violet colored. Then we have these yellow event blocks. These are what's gonna make the code do things at the time you want it to do things. We have our control blocks, which I guess are orange, our all important sensing blocks, which are light blue, our green operators, which are gonna let us build conditional statements and Booleans, the variables, Every program needs variables. This is how we're going to create them on our platform. And then we're going to create our own blocks. That way we can write our own procedures. So let's just start off with something really basic. I want my cat to just walk, okay? So let me put my cat up there so he doesn't walk into the back of the elephant. And what did I tell you makes every program start? I told you every program starts by clicking on the green flag. So you'll notice if I drag this block over from the events that says, when the green flag is clicked, that means any code that I put underneath here is going to run when the green flag is clicked, when the program starts. So when I click my green flag, I want to have my cat move. And I'm not going to make it 10 steps. I'm going to switch it to 100. So right there, I just wrote my first piece of code. I just made it so my cat should walk 100 steps when I click on the green flag. And when I click on the green flag, my cat just moved from here to there. That's 100 spots. All right, wasn't very exciting, but I just wrote my first piece of code. Let's make it a little more exciting. Well, how about now after my cat walks 100 steps, I have it say, hello. Okay. And then maybe I even want to add a sound right after he, uh, the cat says hello. I want it to go meow. So you could see here as I add these blocks, all I'm doing is kind of dragging the blocks to spell out the algorithm that I'm making up in my head, right? When the green flag is clicked, I want to move my cat a hundred steps. I want my cat to say hello and I want it to make a meow sound. So let's do it. Green flag. Hey, it did exactly what it was supposed to do. 
And that's how you write code. And you write code for each one of your individual sprites. Now, there's something else to know about our cat. Not only does the cat have a code tab over here, we also have costumes and sounds. So if I click on the costume tab, you'll notice that even though there's one cat sprite, there's two costumes. And the reason sprites have costumes is because by alternating the costumes, you can see we can create the illusion of movement, okay? And not only do they have costumes, but they also have sounds. Now, just like we were able to add sprites to a program, we can add sound to a sprite. Look over here. I have another one of those blue buttons that turns green. Let's click on it. So when I click on the all, that's what shows all of these sound effects that I can now add to my sprites. So each sprite has code, costumes, and sounds. Now there's a couple of other things we can do. And that is, if you look down here in the corner, there's another one of the blue turn green buttons, and this one lets you add a backdrop. Now, notice I can go over here and choose Beach Malibu, and check it out. Now I got my cat and my elephant hanging out at a beach in Malibu, California. Maybe it's something you see every day. It's California. So you can add backdrops to make your programs look even better. Now, Another thing I want to show you is notice I've been doing this all under my cat. When I come down here and click on elephant, my elephant doesn't have any code. Now I can make new code for my elephant. Or one cool thing about Scratch is you can just drag and drop code from one sprite to the other. So now when I click on my green flag, both the cat and the elephant should both do the same thing. And that is say hello and both go meow. Now it doesn't make sense for an elephant to go meow. So I can go back over here and I can look at my elephant's code and I can see where it says meow. And I could choose a different sound, okay? If I wanted to, I can click on record and I can record my own elephant noise. So these are cool features that let your students personalize their sprites and the sound effects. All right, the last thing I wanna show you before you start to play around on your own is we have another very cool feature built into the Scratch platform here. And that is your backpack. Down at the bottom of the screen, you can see the word backpack. And when you click on it, right now my backpack is empty, there's nothing in it. What is the backpack? The backpack allows you to take code and carry it over to another assignment later in the year. Like, let's just say, for example, and here's our for example, I have a project that I made where I already coded my arrow keys on my keyboard so that when I press up, down, left, right, that's what my sprite is going to do. Well, I would love to use this again later on whenever I want to make a game and have my arrows control a sprite. So I can open up my backpack and just drag this code directly in. And there's my down, my up, my right, and my left. Okay, and that's exactly what I did. Now notice as I was dragging it into my backpack, my code got messed up. Here's a cool secret. If you right click anywhere on your canvas here in the middle, well, you can add a comment, all right, but even, and that will let you pull up a little yellow sticky note and actually put a note in your code, or you can clean up your blocks and look what that does. It puts all your blocks in a nice, straight, neat line. But look at the backpack. Now I have these blocks of code in my backpack. And if we go back to our other assignment, you will now notice when I click on the backpack, it was empty. And now there's that code that I took over from the other assignment. So make sure you use your backpack to save really important pieces of code because it's gonna save you a lot of work. You're not gonna have to do those codes again. So welcome to Scratch, everybody. Have fun playing around.